And uh, once again, our focus is to teach the people that are scattered through North, Central, and South America of Negroid and Indian descent that you are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible, okay? And all you tribes here, the Most High is telling you to wake up, okay? And that's what our show is based on. And uh, tonight's topic, Priest Tahawam is going to edify us on this topic about hell, okay? Is this a uh, Christian a belief, a Roman Catholic belief, or is it actually scripture? And uh, we're going to go through uh, some scriptures and touch on that. Right, priest? Come on, come okay, on, right. so let's say shalom to everybody. Shalom. shalom. Priest Ahawam, priest Ahab. Forgot that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no, and uh, you know we want to, of course, say shalom to those brothers in uh, San Antonio, right. in Atlanta, uh, Kawakab in uh, in Guatemala, and uh, of course a special shalom to High Priest Yeshaya. Yeah. And uh, and a lot of the work he's continued to do over the last forty years. Yeah. Uh, that's that's really <laughs> that's really yeah. Uh, it's really needed that the <laughs> history. There is none uh, no other brother like him going into history and the archaeology. Right. Uh, the anthropology of it and uh bringing out all that information is beautiful right right and uh yeah this, this subject of hell is uh it's kind of a it's kind of a being a controversy with both israelites and you know christians or the church in general you see a lot of youtube videos and they're saying there is no hell and they're basing that off the scriptures then the other people are saying there is a hell also basing it off the scriptures so what we do is we're going to show you know basically concretely that there is a hell right and what the scriptures are explaining to you as hell is not to be mistranslated is not to be said yeah. that oh this means this word or this means that word he's talking about hell if you're looking dealing with christ he's talking about hell he's talking about people either going there being in torments and we're going to go through these scriptures and just show you that this is a real place. It's not just a New Testament made up place and, oh, you never hear about this until the New Testament. It's all through the scriptures. And whether you've caught, whether it was called the pit, so, uh, sometimes it was called the pit, sometimes it was called uh, uh, Sheol, uh, sometimes it was called by different names. But at the same time, when, when it describes torments or anything like that going on, we're not talking about the grave now. And okay. that's, that's what I want to prove through the scriptures. We're not talking about the grave or the pit um in every instance where it talks about hell right all right right it's a very real place right because that's that that's been the the conversation about the grave right or the specific words used to identify the grave right and i think that's where the battle's been over it's uh oh no that's speaking of the earth right or the grave and you're basically saying you're gonna go through scriptures to show that it, it's a it's a difference right it when it's speaking of you said shall. You got shoal. Right. Go ahead. S h e o l. Right. Shoal. Uh, they got Gehenna in the New Testament. Uh, they have uh, Tartaro. You know they, these different words where you see hell. 
you look in a Strong's or something like that, and it goes into it goes into what that word meant in the Greek or what right. that word meant in Hebrew, and uh, what that word actually means. Like you know, if you say Tartaro, we're talking about the lowest part of hell, or you know, you might say Sheol, and that could mean the grave, it could mean the pit, or it could mean uh, you know, here we go, or it could mean uh, or it can mean hell. Okay. Right now, the problem is, is the standpoint that these people are coming from saying there is no hell is that they're thinking, well, what kind of a loving God would burn somebody for eternity? That's mean. Right. Well, what kind of a God would have us wipe out the Canaanites, men, women and children? Right. What kind of God would kill all the firstborn of Egypt or wipe them all, wipe all the remaining out in a flood? Right. Or, I mean, in a, in a wall of water slamming together, you know? Right. Uh, you you got to think that the Most High has done acts like that all through the scriptures to deliver us. And that was okay with every Israelite. Mm -hmm. But once it's for eternity, now they can't accept that. Right. They can't wrap their brain around this. So what I want to do, the first scripture I want to hit in the Apocrypha. And, you know, the we know the Apocrypha is the books they took out of the Bible. For those of y'all that just watching us, right. haven't been with us all this time. The Apocrypha are books they took out of the Bible. And for the same reason, they couldn't wrap their brain around certain concepts like hell right. and the afterlife and things like that. They wanted this beautiful, loving Jesus heaven, you know, right. where they go hug Jesus and rainbows are everywhere and they pick flowers for the rest in, of eternity. In, in, in essence, you get to get away with things. Right. You know, and <laughs> right. You, that's it. And uh, your only punishment is going to be here on earth. Right. Uh, but, you know, uh, just as far as the apocrypha, this is the Bible with the apocrypha. Right, uh, exactly. As a, you know, both of these. the Bible with the Apocrypha, right. right? You know, it's it's because it came together. Right. But go ahead. All right. So Second Ezra, we're going to read from chapter seven and verse fifty-six. This Ezra is what you would know as Ezra in the Bible. Uh, what you actually get in the Bible is the uh, is the third and fourth books of Ezra. All right. What you're getting here is the first and second books of Ezra. All right. So this is Second Ezra, chapter seven and verse fifty-six. I want you to read that. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 56. For while we live and commit iniquity, we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Right. So what did we not consider while we were living? We consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Right. While we lived and committed iniquity. So that's the problem is a lot of these guys, they want to think they're going to you think you're going to get away with all the wicked things you've done in your life. Uh, you think you're going to get away with changing doctrine. You think, you know, as an Israelite, these men that want to say there's no hell. You think you're going to get away with changing doctrine. You think you're going to get away with these uh, the, the polluted sexual acts and things that you're doing against the scriptures. You're not. You don't get to just run through this life ripping and running and, and being a murderer or doing all these abominable acts according to the most high. And then at the end of that, there's no punishment. You just get to sit beside Yahweh Shai in the Holy of Holies. Right. It, it, it reminds me of this last the last show we went over there about the Illuminati. And this is what a lot of the, the Illuminati thinks. Yeah. These uh, these people think that there is no life after death. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and run rampantly through this earth mm. and, and, and pillage and kill and destroy. And I don't have to worry about punishment. Right. He describes those type of people in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, too. We read I think we read that last week, too. Right. Right. That they live this life and they just do whatever they feel like. You right. Know, because we only get one life. No. While you lived in and in, in, uh, in committed iniquity, you never thought you were going to have to suffer for it after death. And that's mm -hmm. what that scripture is saying right there. There is a life after death. So once you die here, once you're buried here. You you get to deal with this, you know, wander around for seven days. Uh, is that what? No, no, just oh, okay. with the wisdom of Solomon too. What, oh yeah, what you of were course. saying right uh, for the ungodly, same reasoning within themselves, but not a right, but not a right. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man to, uh, known to have to return from the grave. Right. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. Mm -hmm. It says, for the breath in our nostrils is as a smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirits vanish. Wow. <laughs> as the sh as the soft air. Right. And these are those cats that, you know, they get so high in their yeah. knowledge in the world and everything that they think there is no God. There is no, you know, the, the, we, all we do is just live and we go away and die. Right. Once we're buried in the earth, we cease to exist. 
you wish. All right. 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 <laughs> the most I is telling you in the scriptures, while you lived and thought like this. Yeah. You weren't thinking that you were going to have to begin to suffer for it. Yeah. After death. Death is where you start to suffer. Right. All right. So people be like, it's just the condition on earth. Right. They say hell is just the condition on earth. No. After you die. Right. You go into another condition. You begin to suffer. Right. Right. This is not compare this on earth. This hell on earth is not compared to the suffering you'll endure after death. Wow. Because <laughs> you lived and committed iniquity. All right. Now, you got to mark those words also. It says why you lived and committed iniquity. So the, the righteous don't have this to fear. The righteous don't have to worry about this. All right. So from there, just, you know, just wanted to show you that there is an afterlife. Right. You know, so we can get that out the way. Right. Because there's so many scriptures on this as. Uh, as you were putting it together, as we go into these these scriptures that, you know, the conditions and the punishments and things like that, that's a whole class in itself. But oh, yeah. just to prove that there is punishment after death. Right. That's what you're proving. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. And, you know, like I said, the standpoint is wrong be of the people that think that there's no hell because they're coming from this. I just, you know, I just want to go to heaven. I only want the good parts of the Most High, and there's only good in the Most High. No, he said, he said it in uh, Amos, he said it in Isaiah, he said that, is there evil done in the city? And I haven't done it. Right. You know what I mean? He said, I, the Lord, do all these things. So we're going to find out the evil part. When, when you die and you don't get to go to the good part of the Most High, now you're going to find out about the evil. But just so, again, we're going to show that. There's that life after death. Right. Right. I want to go to Second Corinthians. Let's think. Let's see how the apostles felt. Second Corinthians chapter five. And we're going to read verse one through ten. Mm. Right. Because, I like I like I like it. I like it because uh, this is edifying, showing that uh, this doesn't have nothing to do with the Roman Catholic Church. Right. Well, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the scriptures and find out. Is this. Is this doctrine true? Right, right, right. Because that's what they're trying to say is, oh, that's an invention of the Catholics. Right. Well, the Catholics weren't around at the time of Christ. The Catholics weren't around at the time of Ezra. Right. All right. right. He was B.C. before Christ. <laughs> all right. So here we're going to find out what the apostles all right, thought about the afterlife, whether there was afterlife or not. Mm -hmm. uh, read that. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. Right. They said we know that if our earthly house, talking about our bodies, our, our fleshly bodies walking around the earth, if that were dissolved. Read. We have a building of God and a house not made with hands. See that we have a building of the most high. We have another building yeah. inside this earthly tabernacle. We have another building that's mm -hmm. talking about the spiritual building. He's going to give you your spiritual body. All right. Go ahead. Eternal in the heavens. And it's eternal in the heavens. Mm. See that? That's where you that's where you'll go when you die. Right, right. Right? Go ahead. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. See that? We we always want to be in that spiritual everybody wants to be in that spiritual spiritual body. house. Right, that spiritual house. Every that's the people that even the people that say there's no hell. Why are they saying it? Mm -hmm. Because they want to be in their spiritual body. They only want the good part, right? And we it's it's a beautiful thing to hope for. All right. Uh, but this is showing you that these apostles, they knew there was a life after death, that right. they were going to get clothed with a spiritual body for the works in the in the faith that they had here. Right. Right. Go ahead. Verse three. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Go ahead. For we that are in the tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Right. So we in this earthly body, we've grown all the time for to be in that spiritual body. Right. Right. We always nobody wants to be on earth anymore. You know, what I mean, <laughs> with all the all the rampant, uh, you know, homosexuality, pedophilia, police beatdowns, uh, shootings, uh, wrongful deaths, unjust judgments in the in the in the justice system, so-called justice system. Nobody wants to be here. This is literally uh, a type of hell on earth. Right. So Paul's establishing that there is life after death. There you go. There you go. Go ahead. Verse five. Mm -hmm. Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also had given unto us the earnest of the spirit. Go ahead. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. 
Right. See that while we're what they're showing you is that while we're in this body, while we're in our in our flesh, we're absent from being around the most high. We don't get to be in heaven. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Go ahead. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. See that they were confident in this in this thought process that they would rather be absent from this body and right. be present with the Lord. They right. knew that that's what was going to happen once your body dissolves, once it dies, is that your your spirit goes up to be with the Lord, the righteous. Go ahead. Second, second Corinthians chapter five, verse nine. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. See that? Go ahead. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. See that? This is what's going to happen after you die. You're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, mm. of Yahweh Shai. All right. Go ahead. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Right. See, and you will receive the things you did in your body, in your flesh. Y'all got to understand this. That means if you did good things, <laughs> you will receive good things. Right. If you did bad things, you will receive bad things. Right. So, you know, it's establishing that it's going to be, it, there is going to be a punishment. Right. Like Ezra said, there, there is going to be a punishment. So it doesn't make any sense to, if you're going to be punished, you're going to heaven. Right. <laughs> and if there, because there's brothers that teach that, that there's a heaven, but there ain't no hell. Hmm. You know, that, that'll make no sense. There's a place to, to you know, for rejoicing, for, uh, for uh, you know, love and goodness and righteousness, but there's not a place for punishment. Right. And they, they lack understanding because, remember, Yahweh, the Most High, he's the king of kings. He has a kingdom. Every kingdom that you've heard of on this earth has what? Has a dungeon. Right. <laughs> All right. And they have a place of punishment. They have a prison or a dungeon. They have something where there's punishment for the criminals. Mm -hmm. Same with the kingdom of the most high. That's why Christ, when he said that you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven because you added to or took away from or changed the word of the most high or said that the law was done away with. He said, you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Guess what? That doesn't mean you're going to be in the in heaven with the most high in Christ. Right, right. It means you're going to get to see all of them. And we're going to go to that that parable, that story also. Right. You're going to get to see all of them in heaven. Yeah. But you'll be separated by such a large space and you'll be tormented. Right. That's going to be part of the hell. Mm. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to this in uh in second Ezra chapter seven. And these are verses that you're only going to find in this, uh, the New Oxford Annotated Bible with the Apocrypha. The Standard Apocrypha, they've actually even taken these verses out. Mm. All right. So this is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 7. And in between, uh, I think it's verse 35. Right in between there, you have from 35 to chapter or to verse 106. Okay. And those were completely taken out of with the Standard Apocrypha. Okay. So we're going to read uh, from, I'm going to start at verse 70, I'm sorry, verse 36. Yeah, verse 36. And I'll just read right here. It says, the pit of torment shall appear mm -hmm. and opposite it shall be the place of rest. See that? So opposite the place of torment will be the place of rest. Right. Okay. And what, uh, what verse are we at? That's verse uh, 36. Okay, 36. Right. Mm -hmm. The pit of torment shall appear and the opposite of it the place of rest right so you have the place of rest where the spirits get to chill until the judgment day and then you got the place of torment mm. opposite it looking you know directly at it all right go ahead and the furnace of hell shall be disclosed see that and the furnace of hell is going to be uncovered go ahead and opposite it paradise of delight right and over there on the other side not in hell right <laughs> right be people in paradise and delight and that's where you get the uh the parable right you know, the right things... it, this is beautiful i was just gonna say that right. this goes right with what christ spoke about he didn't speak of anything different exactly it substantiates that it wasn't just a parable right it wasn't just a bedtime story he told them there you go and we're gonna go to the semantics of that also because, because even in that right. we gotta ask ourselves is parables are they it, did he draw parables out of the wind of the air right and, and were they lies <laughs> right or, or imaginary or what did it come from truth right exactly so uh you know we're gonna go into that parable also um you read all the 36 yes all right um 
What's 37? 37. Then the Most High will say to the nations that have been raised from the dead, look now and understand whom ye have denied. Right. See that? He's going to say to you people, look who you denied. He's yeah. going to show you that, listen, I'm the one you thought didn't exist. I'm the one you said didn't exist. You could just live how you want to mm -hmm. and then die. No, I'm here. And yeah. Right here, you have a place where you're going to rest until I show you that I'm real. Over here, you have the place of, uh, of torment. Then on this part, you got hell. And then over here, you got paradise. And for the ones that didn't believe, they're going to get that hell. For the ones that didn't do, they want to live and commit iniquity, right. they get hell. Yeah. And they get to look right across right. and see paradise. And that's what's illustrated by Christ when we go into Matthews. We're going to go there real quick. Matthews, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, chapter, I, I lost, I'm sorry. Luke, 16, verse 19. Okay. Sorry uh. about that. And we're going to come back to this book also, this annotated apocryphal, because there's a, there's parts that uh, I'm going to skip to. And it's going to describe in a little bit of that hell that people are going to endure after death when they don't believe, when they commit iniquity in their life. All right. So we're at Luke chapter 16, mm -hmm. verse 19. We're going to read through verse 28. And this is, this is a common uh, you know, parable. The churches know it. People know it. Israelites know it. They've right. read this and heard it. And they know what this has to do with. Let me use that one. Right, right. Go ahead. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Right. So he said, you got to know this about Christ. All right. He didn't say once upon a time. He didn't say, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Right. He didn't give a fairy tale beginning. He said there was. Was Christ a liar? Right. Did Christ have to hype up the Bible and the in the scriptures and the most high and, and Christ? Did he have to hype things up by lying? No. He said there was. That means this actually happened. Wow. All right. Wow. So that's what a lot of people miss. They miss these little words and they think Christ was just talking about something he made up. He said there was a certain rich man, right? Go ahead. Verse twenty. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Now, here's another thing. In his parables, the parable of the sower of the seed, he didn't name the farmer. He didn't name in, in, in uh, the parable of the man that uh, went to a faraway land. He didn't name the man. Right. Mm. He, he didn't name these people in this parable. He gives a name to the to the characters in his story. And he also began it with there was. All right. So no other parable does he name the people in it. Mm. All right. Not the unjust judge, not the not, you understand. Wow. Oh, you got to notice this about the scripture. So this actually happened. These are actual characters. There was a rich man. There was a uh, there was a man named Lazarus. All right. Beside his cousin that he brought back from the dead. Right. Read on. Which was laid at his gate full of sores and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. Right. So this was a real man. He was poor. He was begging for just the crumbs that the rich man had. And dogs were licking his sores. This is a real story. This happened to real people. Go ahead. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And um, let me illustrate another point here is that that would be what you would consider hell on earth. I mean, right. <laughs> dogs is licking your sores. You already got sores. Now the dogs right. are licking them. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 5, 13. Right, exactly. Right. And, and that's where we, you know, we know that hell is also a condition on earth. Right. 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 But see, uh, you know, just like heaven's a condition on earth. Right. You know, you got these high echelons that are, are supposedly heaven to them. They're living it up with riches and glory and all these things. And uh, there's people in the ghettos and the slums still hurting right. on crack, on dope, on drugs. That's a condition of hell. Right. And, and that's where a lot of people get it misconstrued. They think this is as far as your imagine, uh, the most high's imagination can go. Right. If torment, like I'm looking at the rich, eat, eat whatever they want and do whatever they want. And, and that looks like heaven to me. Right. And I'm living in this condition and I'm in hell. I pay bills and have my wife gripe at me. That's hell to you. Right. There's more than that. There's more than <laughs> that. It can, it can get worse. Right. And that's what the most high <laughs> leaves for us to understand. Right. See that? And that's the thing is while we're in this hellish condition, right, we need to be, we can be striving to get out of that hellish condition. Right. And, you know, if we go through another class of this, I can show you in hell, in the real hell, there is no 
There's no hope of that. There's no all right. that's gone. <laughs> that's what makes it hell. Wow. Right <laughs> now, uh, go ahead, read that. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The right. So he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. So he was taken up to heaven. He was taken into paradise. Right. right. What we just said was opposite the place of torment. Right. And, and we have to ask ourselves, what, what's the point of this? Right. What's the point of Christ coming out and letting us know this? Right. Like, cause he's just lying to us. He's uh, just coming up with something out of the air. Right. That, that's what you had to ask with all of his parables. Yeah. Why is he saying this? You had to look in there. Well, he's showing you this. Yeah. So you know there's a heaven and a hell. There's exactly. no disputing. Right, right. <laughs> Once Christ said it, what else can you say? And really, that should, I should end, end the show. That, that the should end it, right, right, now, right? exactly. <laughs> but it, it's brothers... And sisters and, and a lot of, like you said, so-called Christians right. that haven't got past this to see what was the point of Christ saying that. Right. Just to let us know that. Right. So, let, you know, let's let's go ahead and examine this parable. All right. Read that part again. The, what happened to the poor man? And it came to pass that the beggar died. And the was beggar died. OK. The right. beggar died. Mm. Remember this part. All right. Now, do angels have to lower you into the grave? No, and that's going to come to bear in a second. Just remember this. All right. Right. Wow. The angels don't have to carry you into the grave. Right. They right. brought him to Abraham's bosom. All right. Go ahead. And was carried by the angels into mm -hmm. Abraham's mm -hmm. bosom. Go ahead. The rich man also died. The rich man died. OK. So when we look at the word hell in the Bible. All right. And if you could put that put that uh, little flashcard up there for me again. The word hell in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, is translated as either Gehenna or Tartaro, Tartaro meaning the lowest part of hell, all right? Uh, Hades is the other translation of hell, and that people have said is just the grave, or the other translation is the after, the underworld. Wow. All right, and it also means hell, mm -hmm. all right? But more people are, that it, the reason we're having to do this show is because more people have taken to this that it just meant the grave. Right. Angels do not have to carry you to the grave. Wow. All right. Men carry you to the grave. Mm. Your body dies and grown men that with flesh carry you to the grave. Right. In this case, what happened to the poor, to the beggar? Angels carried him to Abraham's bosom after he died. Wow. What happened to the, the rich man? The rich man also died. He also died. Read. And was buried. And was buried. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes. Right. Then and in then torment. In hell. Right. So he was dead and he was in hell. Now, here's where people say, see, it's the grave. Mm. It means the grave, just like what was flashing on the screen there. Right. OK, well, let's see. After he went to hell, what happened? And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments. He was in what? Being in torments. Well, once you're in the grave, isn't that it? Don't you just cease to be and, there you go. and your consciousness leaves you and you don't feel? That's what it says in Psalms. Once right. you're in the grave, you don't. You're not right. thinking. You're not feeling. And and that's what the thing is. They err not knowing the scriptures right. as when Job and Psalms, when they were pointing out these instances right. of that without the most high, you wouldn't be. Right. So, you know, remember who your creator is. And, and Job spoke about it. He said in the grave, there's, you know, I, I would rather just be from birth to grave. Right. You know, as opposed to this is speaking of deeper than that. This is going to the fourth dimension. You right. Know? Exactly. So now he's his his flesh is in a grave, mm. but he's in torment. Right. Well, you, all that torment has to do with your feelings and all that. You Unless, know what? I would like to point out was Christ lying. <laughs> right. Once again, like, what's right? the point here? <laughs> like, is he just like making something up and lying to us? Right. Or is it for edification in the spirit? Right. Exactly. And, you know, again, what was Christ's purpose to edify the spirit? Right. See that? Uh, read on. And see if Abraham are far off. So we read in in uh in the uh, second Ezra, right? Right. That the place of paradise was opposite the place of torment. Right. So this goes right along with what Christ's parable is here. Right. That this rich man looked across and he saw the beggar in Abraham's bosom. Wow. In paradise. Mm. Go ahead. And Lazarus in his bosom. And Lazarus was in his bosom. Go ahead. Verse twenty four. Mm. And he cried, and said, Father Abraham. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am. 
I can go to any graveyard right now, dig right into a grave, and I guarantee <laughs> you it will not burst into flames. Right. I, you can do that. You can try this yourself, but you know you might get arrested. <laughs> but right. no, no, no time ever has right. uh, you. Some of you, a lot of y'all, especially the so-called Negroes, so-called Mexicans, y'all been to a lot of funerals. Did you ever see that body lowered directly into a flame? Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's simple as that. Now here, the rich man was being tormented. A dead man was being tormented and he was in flames. Wow. This doesn't happen here. This doesn't happen when you bury someone. This happens. This don't happen in the grave in Hades, the grave. This happens in Hades hell. Right. right? And, and that's another thing. They err not knowing the scripture. Right. You know, even uh, as you talk about Hades or uh, with the other place where they burn trash or. You know, that, that's the next point also. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no, no, that's ahead. good. But yeah, when you read about these places, uh, the context of what the, the who was dropping it, how they gave it and what context were they speaking in? Right. Right. You know, uh, when David said you can go up into heaven and the most high is there or you can go to hell. The most high is there. Well, what context was he speaking in? Right. right. He was saying all of them. Right. All of them. It don't matter. You can be in the grave or you can try to you can uh, be that way. The most high is there. He will be with you everywhere. Right. Whether right. it's the grave, the fourth dimension, heaven, hell, he's everywhere. Right. Right. See that. But he also said, can the dead arise and praise you? Right. There's no there's no worshiping in the grave. They, so right, if point. it was talking about the grave, that hell, there you go. <laughs> then there you, you, go. Wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be worshiping. You wouldn't be acknowledging the most high. There you go. Yeah. But he's talking about literally that fourth dimension hell. Right. And you will see the most high from where your where spirit you're goes. At. Exactly. There you go. All right. Wow. Uh, read on. Luke chapter 16, verse 25. Mm. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Mm -hmm. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. So like we read in Second Ezra, you know, or um, yeah, we read in Second Ezra, you're going to receive for the things you did mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm. Or we read in First Corinthians, we also read there, you're going to receive for the things that you did on earth, right. what you did in your body. Mm -hmm. Right. In First Corinthians five. Uh, read on. But now he has comfort. Right. So now Lazarus, who did, you know, he did what he did. He's comforted now. He lived he lived in that hell on earth. He's comforted now for, for enduring. Go ahead. And thou art tormented. And now you are tormented. You're dead, but now you're tormented. Mm. See that? So while you lived and committed iniquity, you didn't consider you were going to suffer for it after death. But now you're going to be tormented. Right, right. Read on. Verse 26. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Right. So this goes into the location and everything like that. And uh, that's why I didn't want to go too deep, but I'm going to give it to y'all. You see it here between the paradise and hell. There was a great gulf fixed, as we read in Second Ezra 7. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's separated by the span of the most high's hand. You see in all the people. And we're going to go to that back in the uh, Apocrypha here mm -hmm. um, in, in uh, verse uh, 76. All right. But you're going to see that in hell. Right. You can see the people being Torment. In, par in paradise. In, oh, in paradise. Yeah, in okay. paradise. That's what's going to make it so much more hellish. Right. Is wow. that, damn, it's right there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you understand? That's what's going to make it so much much more hellish is that he could see mm. Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. He could see everyone living it up, just like Lazarus did on earth. Right. But way better. All right, go ahead. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Right, see? Those that would pat the want to pass from from paradise to hell to help a person out down there can't. Right. The the most high is like he's not even letting them. And when you go into that second Ezra seven, he tells him, he said, don't even pray for them. Mm. <laughs> he said, you, you can't even pray for them. Mm. But he, he shuts all that off. There's no hope for them at all. Right. All right. Uh, go ahead. Where you at? What verse? The end of verse 26. Go ahead. Neither can they pass to us. That will come from dense. Right. See, so even if you wanted to, no matter how bad you want to, you can't pass from hell over to paradise. Go ahead. Luke chapter 16, verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee, that forefather, that thou would send him to my father's house. Right. So, you know, that's that's it on that. Y'all can read that for yourselves. But 
you know, he goes into, you know, send them, send them to my father's house and warn them. Right, right. And this was the point, to warn us. Yeah, I got a question. So where would this place uh, called uh, Hell be? Where would Hell be? Yeah, where would Hell be? Well, let's, let's see, because... The, what we've been shown is that, like I said on the flashcard, or like we show it on the flashcard, mm -hmm. that it's Gehenna. All right, mm -hmm. Gehenna literally translates as the Valley of Hinnom. Mm -hmm. All right, now, and that's where you see uh, you got Shul, you got Hades. Uh, in this case, you read about Gehenna. Okay. Gehenna, and, and even if it was translated Hades, we've already broke down. It couldn't have just meant the grave. Right. Gehenna is the Valley of Hinnom, uh -huh. and I want you to put that picture up too because uh, we're gonna go to Mark chapter 9 mm -hmm. and verse 45. Right. And we're going to let Christ once again explain about the valley of Hinnom. Right. Because, right? and, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead too quick, but oh, no. we're dealing with spiritual, a right. spiritual chambers. Right. We're dealing with where heaven would be. Right. It, because it's, it's in that same dimension. Right. Right. We're not talking about is not talking about the grave. And that's the point you're making. There you go. Right. There's a there's instances where it does identify the grave as right. the dirt, the earth. Right. But then a lot of these chapters is talking about actual this fourth dimension, the spiritual plane right. where the most high punishes the wicked. Right. Right. Mm. And, uh, you know, real quick, if I can uh, go to we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse one. And just to see, because we went and shown that there is a heaven. You know, you know, there, you can be in Abraham's bosom. Right. You can be up there with the Most High in Christ. We we read that from First Corinthians, right? Right. So everyone wants to believe in this heaven where you get to go because you were so good in life, or some brothers are saying no matter what you did in life, that's if you're insane. a rapist. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you're a rapist, yeah, you get killed here or you get your punishment here. But after that, you're done. You're done being punished. Right. Ah, oh, why you lived and, and committed iniquity? You didn't consider you were gonna suffer for it after death. right now read that uh proverbs 11 and 1 there you go a false balance is an abomination to the most high right. a false balance is abomination he's not just gonna have all club med after you die right you know what i mean you don't get to just go into disney world when you die if you just <laughs> live like a damn rat on the earth right no, you you get punished mm. if there's a reward for for just and righteous men and women then what should there? How how just and righteous would the Most High be if He didn't make a punishment for the wicked? Right. It's like they said: if every day was a sunny day, there wouldn't be no sunny days. Right. Right. <laughs> if everybody got to get in, where's the justice? There you go. Is the Most High not just? Yeah. You got to ask yourself that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I add one right with you? Oh, of course. This is Revelation one verse eighteen. Uh, I'm hope I'm hoping I'm not jumping, but it says here: and he that liveth and was dead. And behold, and alive forevermore, Amon, ha, uh, it says, and have the keys of hell. Right. And it says, and death. Right. So it so separates, that's different. That's it separates different. them. There you go. Hell and, and of death. Excuse me. I missed the of. And of death. Right, right. So that's showing you again, those are two separate levels. Those right. are two separate worlds. Yeah. You got death where you're not conscious to the things of the world. And then you got after death, you there have you hell. <laughs> Where your yeah. conscience, your spirit goes to. There you go. Right. You know, because your body doesn't, your physical life or your physical fleshly body doesn't disappear out of the grave. Right. right? Absolutely. So those, those dead fleshly bodies, yes, yeah, that is the end of your flesh, but your spirit lives on. Right. Somewhere else. Yeah, I'm getting some uh, deep, deep questions here. Uh, so the spirit feels pain in this next dimension. Yes. Yeah. That he just said he it. He just said it. Christ don't lie. That you will not suffer after death. <laughs> right. You that, know. That's the thing. You're gonna feel. You're gonna feel thirst. You're yeah. gonna feel burning and flames and pain. You're gonna feel a lot of things because the thing is, is you remember if you if you can remember this about your anatomy, you when you feel pain, yeah, it registers to what to your mind. There you go. This that's why you got these kung fu experts over there that can stab themselves through with a pin and everything, and they don't feel it. They can even make themselves not bleed because they've detached their mind from that incident. Right. But in hell, there is no detaching. Yeah. <laughs> it's all towards your mind. And we 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 all know this is a common occurrence with everybody that is human. You've been in a dream that felt so real, mm -hmm. God. you know, that you woke up in sweats or you had a dream you was peeing on yourself and you jumped up and <laughs> went to the bathroom and had to pee. Right. Right. So, you know, y yes, this is uh, 
when the, bo the mind detaches from the body, it's still connected to the creator. There you go. And we went over that before about reincarnation, but I mean, the soul is eternal. Exactly. So, yes, the Most High has control of that. Right. You got to remember that uh, when we read uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's, uh, was it 619? Mm -hmm. Where he talks about, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you are not your own. Right. But he says to glorify yourself, glorify the most high in your bodies, which is the most high. So yeah. That means your, your body is on loan from the most high. He put a little bit of his spirit in you. His spirit does not die. There you go. All right. Your, that means what's in you does not die. So mm -hmm. it got to go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your flesh dies, but that spirit got to go somewhere. God. And when that spirit, when that's if that spirit lived and committed iniquity, it suffers after death. That's the beginning. All right. Um, just with that, um, well, we're on what? Mark? Mark or chapter 9. Right, read Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 45. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. So this is Christ again. He said, if your foot offends you, cut it off. It causes you to offend. If it makes you, if, if you can't stop yourself from walking into the liquor store every hour of the day, or if you, he said, you, you should cut your foot off. You right. know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. sit in the house and chill. <laughs> Once right. again, that's a parable, well, right? In a parable form, right, right. extreme situation, right? And, and he's showing you where your mind state should be. All right, go ahead. It is better for thee to enter halt into life, right, than having two feet to be cast into hell. Into where? To be cast into hell. Now, in this instance, right, that word translates as Gehenna. All right. And I want you to show pictures of the Valley of Hinnom, because that's what they say in the Greek. Gehenna means the Valley of Hinnom. OK. All right. Now, down at the bottom, if you can, you can barely see it. It's like uh, right below Zion. Oh, yeah. I see it right there the at the bottom one. The Valley of Hinnom. Yeah. Or the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. Excuse me. All right. This is a place that historically we would dump our trash and it will be burnt in that place. All right. And you can see it it's better illustrated there. That we would dump our trash over the walls and down the hill and uh, criminals that had been uh, executed would be dumped over there also. And everything there would be lit on fire. So at the time, a lot of people knew this. This was all they knew of hell. They right. thought it was flames and there was worms down there because it was trash. Right? right. So when people see this and they hear Christ say uh, that, you know, read on. Into the father never shall be quenched this is what they think that he was illustrating about right they say the fire that's never quenched read verse 46 where their worm dieth not where their worm dieth not so they think of this place of worms where trash is and right when it's lit on fire that it's burning right but he said read it again 45 where and if mm -hmm. 45 uh-huh and if thy foot no, no, no. uh it's 46 you. 46 where their worms dieth not. He said where their worms dieth not. If you read the end of 45, he said also where the fire is never quenched. This is, the, this is a current picture of the Valley of Hinnom, all right? The Valley of the Son of Hinnom. Do you see fire? No. All right. So the fire has obviously <laughs> been quenched. Right. You're showing <laughs> the difference between of a carnal mind and understanding the scriptures. Exactly. As opposed to to understanding the parables of what Christ was leading to. There you go. You know, like he just said in Revelations 1.18. Right. He has the, the keys to hell and death. Right. And if this is the keys that you think he had, that he Right. Oh, down, we're getting away yeah. with anything, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> right. Now, these are people laying around in the Valley of Hinnom on vacation. All right. They're laying down there as if they're dead bodies. Right. But are they on fire? No. No. Uh, do you see worms crawling in and out of them? No. Remember, the, no. Christ said the, the worm would never die. Right. right. The worm that eats you and crawls in and out of you would never die. And he also said that the fire is not quenched. There is no fire. There is no worms. Right. This is not the valley of Hinnom when he says hell. Right. When he says hell and they translate it as Gehenna, it still means hell. There you go. It still means after life hell. They err not knowing the scriptures. Exactly. Right. And just not having common sense. The scripture told you the fire is not quenched. <laughs> Let me get one right with that. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 16, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell and bringest up again. Mm -hmm. A man indeed killeth through his malice and through the, and the spirit. When it goeth forth, returneth not. Neither does the soul uh, receive up 
uh, cometh again. So a man can't raise up a right. soul. Right. The Most High has that power. Exactly. It says, but it is not possible to escape thy hand. Right. So a man will kill you, and he can't raise you up again. You know, he <laughs> right. can't. But the Most High's hand, you can't escape. And that's in the Old Testament, right? This is No, this is Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. This is Wisdom of Solomon uh, 16, verse 14. Right. The Old Testament. Oh, the Old Testament. Right. I'm sorry. Right. The Old because Testament. there's people that say, oh, well, Christ it brought these things out in the New Testament. Right. Christ was only illustrating the old because he said the same thing. And I'm going to go to that scripture after when you're done with this. Yeah. One. It ties right in with what you just read here. Wow. Yeah. So if you could read that again. Yeah. It says, so fresh. but it is not possible to escape thy hand. Right. Right. So uh, once again, verse 13, for thou hast power of life and death. And then it comes back and says, thou leadest to the gates of hell and bring us up again. Wow. You know, and this is where we go into uh, Peter's where he says um, where he says that uh, uh, the uh, the men that was reserved for uh, hell, mm -hmm. the angel, excuse me, the angels that were reserved for hell. Second Peter two and four. Second Peter's. Right. 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 Um, let's just ride along with that scripture you just read. Yeah. And this is going to, this is going to illustrate what, uh, what he's talking about. Go to Matthew 10 and verse 28. This is what Christ was talking about. Right. All right. When he said that, that, uh, when you, what he just read here about the most high has this power to right. raise up that spirit. Right. Okay. He bring that spirit out the body mm -hmm. and he put it in some kind of torment. Right. Yeah. This is what he was talking about. The same thing. This is what Christ was illustrating. Read Ma that. Matthew 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body. Right. Don't feel that fear them that killed your fleshly body. All right. Because that's the end of your fleshly body. You uh. don't have to fear that. This is what you should fear. And a lot of you heard this. Wow. But in a lot of you that say there's no hell heard this, but you didn't register it. You didn't let it sink in. And let the words of Christ really marinate mm. in your brain. Wow. He said, don't fear those that can kill the body. Read. But are not able to kill the soul. But they're not able to kill the soul. They can't kill your spirit. Read. Mm. But rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Right. See that? So oh. he can. So uh, this type of hell <laughs> destroys said, both. Lord. Right. <laughs> Uh, uh, the go if you're telling me that the power of that six foot deep hole in the ground that you dug for your grandma, your grandpa, your mother, your father had power to destroy their spirit. No, then you have no hope. You are already in hell because you're telling me that that little six foot hole was the end of your father, was the end of your mother. And we know that from back to wisdom of Solomon, too. Right. That's what the ignorant and the wicked would say. Exactly. You know, and that's why they live life so wickedly, because there's no consequences. Right. Right. I can be an animal and beast and I'm not going nowhere anyway. Right. And some of them is not their fault. Somebody right. told them there wasn't a hell. Somebody told which led them to believe. OK, I don't have nothing to fear. Right. And somebody told them that there was nothing happens when you die. Mm -hmm. You just die and you're done existing. Right. So they thought, OK, well, I only got one life to live. YOLO. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you only live once. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they live like that. Yeah. You understand? They mm -hmm. didn't consider this type of things that the most high in this hell that it's not the grave. He's this hell destroys both soul and body. Right. And, you know, you know, uh. I guess this would be to more of the the Israelites is that we we understand that the Most High is going to create uh, heaven on earth, right? To be uh, as it is uh, as it is in heaven, right? You know, uh, we have to see that the resemblance of what is now on earth, right. which is uh, you know destruction, chaos, discord. This is a uh, physical, right. It's a physical manifestation, just like the, the heaven on earth. There you is. go. <laughs> just like just like there would there is a, a spiritual manifestation of these conditions, but uh, one million times worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One million times worse. Right. So what you're seeing here is is if you feel like you're in a hellish condition, you're in a physical manifestation in earth as it is in the heavens, right. as, as it is in this fourth dimension. Hell, if you're in a heavenly condition, if you're. You know, you're in heaven. And, right, right. You know, you, you sing it and dance all day. You're in a heaven, uh, a physical manifestation of that heaven on earth. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But. So the scriptures, you know, just right. pointed out, it's, it's, not a, it's not a lie. You right. know, Isaiah 5, 13, that, you know, that there is uh, hell as a condition on earth. Exactly. But 
what we're not getting, what a lot of brothers is not getting is that if there's a physical place on earth that is a condition of hell, there's also a spiritual exactly. to show you how worse and how much power the creator has. Right, right. And, you know, that's I mean, but this scripture, I mean, <laughs> verse 28, Matthew 10, 28, the fear and fear, not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Where would he kill the soul at? Right. In heaven. Right. right? Uh, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body. He tells you. Right. In hell. In hell. Right. Right. That's where he destroys the spirit, destroys the soul. And, and if you want to get a little deeper for a lot of brothers, where does the most high deal with the souls? Right. In the fourth dimension. So you ask yourself, well, where does this all take place? It takes place in where we don't see. Right. It right. takes place in that side. So right. and a lot of y'all lucky you don't see that. <laughs> right. The things that are going to happen over there might give you a heart attack in your physical body and send you to the fourth. Right. Um, oh, read on. Oh, OK. And uh, are not two sparrows sold for a father? Oh, OK, that was it. on. That. OK. OK. So, again, just reiterating on that on that hell. This is not talking about the Valley of Hinnom. All right. This is not talking about the grave only. This is talking about after the grave, mm. after they bury you, after you've been entombed, after you've been cremated. Now you're at, what you think the rich man was talking from the cremation center <laughs> right? <laughs> with the flames are tormenting me. Right. It, 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 you're showing that it's other scriptures that we have to take a look at and consider. Oh, definitely. Yes. As there's other script, there's scriptures that tell you pointing out the grave. But there's deeper scriptures like the ones you're hitting on right. that to show that there is a spiritual hell. Right. And I like I, it. And actually to show that it's spiritual, let's get Second Peter 2 and 4 because you quoted it. Yeah. Right? But to show that it is right. a spiritual hell, mm -hmm. know this. Angels are not fleshly men. There you go. Angels are spirits. So... Let's let's see what happens to the angels that he found iniquity in. Let's find let's find out what happened to to the angels who lost their way, right? Read that. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sin, he spared not the angels that disobeyed his commandment. And what did he do to the angels that disobeyed? Did he let them kick it with him in heaven? Let's see. But cast them down to hell. He did what? But cast them down to hell. He let them sit on his right hand? But cast them down to hell. He drank with them in the kingdom with Christ. But cast them down to hell. He took the angels, these spiritual beings who don't die and are not buried mm -hmm. anywhere, and he cast them down to hell. Read. And delivered them into chains of darkness. Right. He put them in chains of darkness in hell. That's where he punishes spirits. So when Christ said... Fear him who can who can destroy both body and spirit. Right. He was giving you an illustration of this, that the most high is tormenting spirits up there. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. He's tormenting spirits and angels, angelic beings. He's tormenting them and put them in chains of darkness. So what can he do more to your spirit being a human being? See that? That's where that goes down. All right. Wow. And uh, let's actually get this real quick because uh, I want to basically squeeze as many scriptures as I can in here. Okay, we got eight minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it went that Oh, quick. that's right. We're eight to nine now. I'm thinking right, we right. got 930. Yeah. Uh, uh, second Ezra uh, chapter seven. And I'm gonna we're going to start at verse 79. Mm. All right. And, and if we have to do a part two on this, we got We have to do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, hopefully they get the point at this point. But right. the part two would be the description. That's right. what we got to go really in. Uh, but you got that in there or should I read it from here? Oh, no, I don't have it. I OK, don't, I right. can read it for you, though. Oh, no problem. It's going to start right where that arrow is on verse 79. Uh, verse 79. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, uh, second Ezra 7 and get verse 79 10. if it is one of those who have sh shown scorn and have not kept the way of the most high so this is for you that are saying oh yeah you know I could do what I want I'm an Israelite we're the chosen we're gonna get in the kingdom no matter what right we're always we're, you can do whatever we want we're gonna get in the kingdom he said if these these are the ones that scorn the most high in their bodies yeah first Corinthians 5 verse 1 through 10 the ones that acted this way in their bodies Go ahead. They have scorned and have not kept the way of the Most High. Right. Who have despised the law and hated those who feared the Most High. So the law is important. The people that despise the law, they didn't show no fear of the Most High. Read. Such spirits shall not enter into habitation. Such bodies? 
Sh such spirits, carnal flesh, spirits, their spirits won't what shall not enter into habitations. They won't enter into the rest zone. Go ahead. But shall immediately wander about in torments. Ooh. They will immediately wander about in torments, just like the rich man immediately wandered about in torments. Go ahead. Always grie grieving and sad. In seven ways. Right. They're going to be grieving and sad in seven ways. This is why they're going to be grieving. There's seven different reasons they're going to be grieving and sad. Read. The first way, because they have scorned the law of the Most High. Right, so they're going to realize, dang, there was a Most High. And I basically peed on everything he ever sat down. Go ahead. The second way, because they have not, they cannot now make a good repentance so that they may live. Right. See, there's no sorries they can do after that point. Right. Or you Hebrews, there's no salaks after that yeah. point. It's that's it. You're in torments. Go ahead. The third way they shall see the reward laid up for those who have trusted the covenants of the most high. Right. They're going to be the rich man looking at Lazarus, seeing Once how he's again. being treated. Exactly. Right. What Christ was saying. Right. This is what's going to torment them. It's like, damn, it's right there. Right. Go ahead. The fourth way they shall consider the torment laid up for themselves in the last days. See, in the fourth way, they're going to consider the, what torment's going to come to them in the last days. See, they're not even starting. That's beginning of the torment. Right. He says some <laughs> shall be raised to everlasting life. Right. And some shall be raised to everlasting condemnation. Exactly. So those are committed iniquity in this life. They start getting tormented immediately. Then they get judged at the at the last time and then go back into torment wow. even worse. All right, go the, ahead. The fifth way, they shall see how the habitations of others are guarded by angels in profound quiet. Right, see, they're going to see how if they could get over there, it's guarded by an angel. <laughs> that, that angel's going to block them off. There is no it's destroying hope. all hope. Exactly. It's, it's just hopelessness and despair. Go ahead. The sixth way, they shall see how some of them will cross over into torments right see that they're gonna see other people going into worse torments and that's gonna torment them like i hope i'm not next all right go ahead the seventh way which is worse than all the ways that have been mentioned because they shall utterly waste away in confusion and be consumed with shame right and that's all through the scriptures also that's the other things i want to throw in there but they're gonna be in confusion because he's gonna take away all the thoughts Mm. <laughs> all they have down there is confusion. They they don't have uh, a lot of them are going to be suffering and don't even know why anymore. <laughs> That's how bad the torment's going to be. Wow. And shall wither with fear at seeing the glory of the Most High, in whose presence they sin right. while they were alive. Yeah. See, they're going to still see the glory of the Most High. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're going to be fearful of that. They're going to be fearful of his glory in the afterlife. That's why he said, if I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Wow. That's what this scripture is showing you, that right. he's there. All right, read that real quick, Revelations 20 and 10. Yeah, well, I want to go more into that, but yes. <laughs> those are the seven reasons. And the worst reason is that you still get to see the most high. Right. You, you still behold his face. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Revelations chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and Where brimstone. The, where's the devil cast? And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire Go ahead. and brimstone. Go ahead. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Read. And shall be tormented day and night. Day and night. Read. Forever and ever. For a short time. Forever and ever. Just, just until the last day. Forever and ever. Ever. Right. So that's where you're going to be. That, you know, you that's live wicked. and commit iniquity. Yeah. You stay wicked. You end up in this place with the beast, with the devil. Right. Being tormented forever and ever. Right. That's the Bible. Uh, so if, if you don't yeah. believe at this point and you're not and it doesn't cause a fear in you, then you're you're meant to be destroyed. Mm. You're I mean, you're less than retarded. There's. We Nothing to say for you. And, and there's so much more logic in the scriptures. Oh, yeah. Scripturally, like you put uh, Proverbs uh, 14, I think it was, right. where it says that there's a un, uh, the, with the most high, he's not an unjust balance. Right, right. You know, look at all the wisdom in the Bible that leads to show that you're not going to get away with it. Right. You're going to be punished. Yeah. And it ain't just going to be here on earth. There's something. Listen, there's something worse than this. Yeah. You know, just let's think about slavery. 
how we came out of slavery, being chained to trees, sawed in half, burnt on trees, children being bashed. There's worse than that. Right. Those and, were just low level spirits. There you go. On people. Right. <laughs> These are going to be angels. They're going to specialize in torments. Right, right. So, uh, brothers and sisters, we thank you all for tuning in. We'd like to, uh, uh, if you have any questions or comments, email us or call us. And we'd like to thank you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.